So you want to learn how to add screen tones and clip studio paint like a professional manga artist? You've come to the right place. This place, this place, this place, this place. Now I know what you're thinking, the video's kind of long, but trust me. As someone who has scoured the internet to find videos like this, especially when I needed them when I was starting out, everything you could possibly need is in this video. Think of it like an ultimate guide, teaching you mostly how I do things, touching a little bit on how others do things, but also pushing you to come up with your own way. White Manga here, the creator of Apple Black, published since your life in Saturday AM, and our books are in freaking Walmart if you walk in, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, the list goes on. My Manga, Apple Black, along with all the other stellar books within our book line. We were on the cover of Neo Magazine and more. So how do I add screen tones? How to add screen tones for your own mangas within Clip Studio Paint? Let's go. There are many ways to create a tone layer, but here is one way I always use. And let's say that's one selection. You can hold shift and make more selections. You can use any other shade. And then over here with new tone, you then mess around with the settings. I always have the frequency at the highest. And we can leave this at 15, line and leave the angle as is but if you move around the angle 45 you see what it did just go back to 180 or 90 it doesn't really matter and then you have lines Control z do it again but now let's do uh say circle and then let's have the density at 30. And every time we've done that it's created a tone layer right here instead of a selection as long as you're on that layer it doesn't matter what brush you use we use the real g-pen see there we use another brush running watercolor edge and whatever, right? If you go more and more detail, you see it's doing what we want. As long as you find a way to select the area, you can use the polyline tool right here. You select it, as long as you select it, you hold shift and select another one. And then you can either fill right here or control Z, hit alt delete or option delete, depending on whether you're using a PC or a Mac. If you wanted to create another tone, if you had the same exact settings and you hit OK, it will just refer back to the already created layer. But if we make a slight change to it, instead of maybe 30, we do 20, it'll create a new one. I personally like the density at 30 and the frequency at 85, which you can also edit here while on that layer. If you go to layer properties, you can play around with it here as well. Where you tone your manga, that is completely up to you. I tend to tone certain spots, maybe people's hair for some characters and I just stay consistent. Certain things in the background, flags, ultimately depends on you. If somebody has black pants, the part that the light hits the pants the most is usually left blank and not filled in with black, waiting for me to come in with this same tone. And I tend to use this tone for majority of the places where I use tone on the comic page to save time. Because traditionally, especially with the Japanese approach to making comics, it's more about getting the content out there and less about getting every detail and every tone different. And that's why you have several mangas, especially the ones that come out very frequently, have limited tone. But you have the freedom to do whatever you want. Another one here is the selection pen right here. And this just means everywhere you draw just becomes a selection. And again, right here, we're already on the tone layer. We can go back to the first one and you just hit fill here as another option and it'll just do it. Another neat trick is we go back to this layer and you hit shortcut G. For the gradients, keep it on foreground to transparent, but I recommend you guys play around with all of these. It'll help you understand it even better. And make sure it's on black. And you can kind of click and drag and it creates a gradient. Moving forward, you'll see where we apply these and where we use these. But if you want to change this whole layer to tone, and it's very visible to see the effects when you're doing it with a gradient, but on this layer right here, you can go to the layer property and this button right here, if you tap that tone, it changes it to tone. And then it gives you more options with the density against at 60 and the frequency at 60. But if you remember, I like it to be at 85 and the higher the frequency, the more fine it looks. I don't tend to change a lot of things to tone. You can always change it back by hitting tone again. And now it's completely smooth, like a flat digital gradient. Now this is just an example of me applying all those screen tones with all the methods we've shown so far. Usually when a character is wearing all black, instead of filling every part of the clothing with black, I leave some parts that light hits the most to fill that in with tone. It kind of gives the clothes a little bit more pizzazz. But again, you read a series like a Naruto, you see stuff like this less. You look at a My Hero Academia or a One Punch Man, you see this more. But I'm just filling in all the places that I know tone is going to be. These are also pages from Apple Black Volume 4, so. It might be a little bit spoilery if you're keeping track with, say, the volume one that just dropped recently. Using that same faux panel is still in the subtool decoration under 
vegetation, there are all sorts of brushes you can use. And there are some you can actually download in Clip Studio Paint. But when I do trees, you have options. I'll have this on black, go trees, and you can, you know, have trees at the distance. I don't really use this one as much. I tend to draw my own trees rather than use the tree brushes. But with a husky maple leaf or foliage, and let's just use foliage, I can make bushes and trees this way. And it's easier this way. And sometimes I mix it up. I use both of them at the same time. And I do stuff like this, right? Rather than manually drawing all the leaves. And sometimes I'll do this and you see it's all black, but it looks even better if I then go over it with white, giving it a little bit of depth. And I like to make sure I go over it with white and not transparent. And I always have it on its own layer for trees. And you will also see examples of me doing this. Sometimes I mix this up. I might have like part of the tree drawn out, a little bit of shading. And this is my own style for drawing trees with this very black and white. As you can predict, there are many other ways to draw trees. You don't have to use this one. Done my dashing, done some of the shading. Maybe if some of the parts that I know will be covered a whole lot more, I'll shade that part a little bit. And then you have the trees. Some parts I want to fill in black because I know light's going to hit there the least. But rather than draw the leaves, again, I'll go in with the vegetation brush. And then I go in with white. And you can see how you can form interesting shapes and forms and trees and all of that. With this page, characters are at a beach. That's kind of like a stylistic beach house. And you can see me use that tree and bushes technique in the back. Again, on a separate layer, so sometimes it overlaps with the drawing where applicable and sometimes it's behind the drawing. So you can even have two separate layers kind of doing a similar thing. Also, when I'm toning, if the glasses are tinted, I kind of tone like so. Either I fill in with the regular tone or I use a gradient or both. Similar approach to water, create a new layer, create a gradient. But now with this gradient, I'm going to maybe confine it a bit. Shortcut M for the marquee tool. We get a selection area, rectangle. I recommend you label your layers just for better organization. Some kind of gradient, right? Real G pen, transparent, and you could go in with little dashes to mimic water. Maybe the light source is coming from above. And so everything is a little bit more concentrated to look a little bit more like water. You'll have more space between them the further down you go. This is one way to do water. There are other ways. Another way would be a gradient, but in the opposite direction. It depends on what the light source is. It depends on a couple of things. Where if you're looking at, say, the ocean, it's actually darker when you look further into it. And then you still have the same approach. This might actually be better, right? Where you can do the dashes, and they're more concentrated and tinier at the top, and they get, they get bigger with more space as it comes down. Or you have these lines that kind of connect in a very sloppy way through dashes still. It's almost like it's going like this, but a little more subtle about it and connecting with other things. Some parts would be thicker than others. And still, it's more concentrated at the top where they connect a little more. It's a little bit more congested to show depth. And then you can add a tone layer. We can use maybe use the tone layer that already exists down here. While I'm on that layer, I'm going to delete everything within the selection. You have to go, you have to leave transparency, maybe go to black and then just add these blobs strategically placed where you have a blob and then you have another blob right next to it. Not necessarily quite close, but not touching. You have some smaller than others. I'm not touching any of the white lines, by the way. Same thing, the closer, the further down, where it's closer to the camera, the blobs are a little bigger, a little bigger and less concentrated. And these are also calmer waters. You can even stay, take it a step further and create a new layer above it all. Find the right star brush, shortcut B, go to effects, sparkle, use white, make sure that layer is above everything. And then you can add little sparkles. Y'all see what I'm talking about. Y'all yeah, yeah, know what I'm talking about. Y'all see it before. And you have multiple options to choose from. Again, as always, there are other ways to draw water. There are people that just do the simple, you know, drawing it with line art and not necessarily screen tones. 
again it depends on your style i highly recommend you study your favorite manga artists and see how they do it and how you can replicate that in clip studio paint again these were karma waters you're sometimes where i combine creating the water with tone and with line art say so like this and then you have bubbles the little circles and these are the parts where you have more concentration and whatever and let's say there's a little bit of like the water is kind of going up a little bit these are just the concentrated parts where bubble hits and basically using lines line arts to create these white spaces in between because they're a little bit more concentrated and they're bubbly and where they meet is it collides so you have bubbles splashing all over the place and then what you could do is use a selection pen imagine selecting the parts or selecting the whole thing in fact let's do that shortcut g create a gradient or even use shortcut b shortcut b again for a soft airbrush and kind of create a manual gradient that way it doesn't feel too digital, if you will. Hell, we can even give it that tone with the properties, increasing the frequency to the top. You, you should feel free to experiment wherever you see fit. Shortcut C, and you can just erase the path in between if it's easier. And you can have some that have line arts, you can have some that don't. White lines, formed from the erasing with the transparent shortcut C, also giving the water a sense of motion and direction where you can kind of view how it's clashing here at the top, pretty chaotic, wavy. You can even have little circles to help sell more bubbles. If it's too dark with the gradient part, you can reduce the opacity a little bit. Shortcut B, shortcut B. To the airbrush, you look for droplets. Make sure it's white and add more of that to help give it, again, that water splashy vibe. The whole point of this is to show you that there is a lot you can do. You can come up with your own styles, your own ways, mix and match all of this to form what you want. Also adding a little pool in the beach house thing. And so the same techniques, and so the same techniques apply adding in water there, figure out the gradient and how you want it to go, what side is dark, what side is lighter. And then you render with some darks and some lights and some tone to make it look more and more like water. Similar thing here, but now it's more so at a distance. You see a little bit of a silhouette in the back. It'd be somewhat faded for some atmospheric pressure. So it might be playing around with opacity, playing around with tones, playing around with gradients, all with the main goal to make it look slick and saucy. See the silhouette, making sure it has a reflection on the water. That's part of making it saucy. Feel free to use reference. Feel free to see how other creators do it. It always helps. I'm playing around with gradients to form the clouds as well, but I'll go into more detail about that real soon. And we can go into material on their backgrounds. It's fine, let's pick one of these backgrounds. For some of them, you might have to download them. Now, in my series, Apple Black, it's all fantasy backgrounds, all made up backgrounds. So I don't use these nearly as, in fact, I don't use these at all. But we're going to use this for the example. And there's other fun things you can do for a background, but I'm going to save that for a separate video. Maybe taking photographs and turning them into backgrounds you can use for your manga. So make sure you're subscribed and you stay tuned for that. When you pull it in, it creates this layer, a new layer for it say a light source coming from above and let's say it's daytime but even if it's nighttime i'll do something similar depending on where all the light sources are if lights coming from the windows blah 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 blah, blah. but point is generally nine times out of ten for simplicity's sake daytime sunny out even if the walls every part of this wall is white i tend to fill in these parts black you can actually fill in with the fill tool shortcut g and hit g again refer other layers you can just tap now i'm on a separate layer as i'm doing that so you have to be very careful what layers you're actually working on uh, sometimes you might even want to rasterize this layer first so you can mess around with it unless in fact let's do that that way once it's rasterized you can actually erase it you know tweak it make changes to it however you see fit but the bottom line is i select a lot of the top areas and i fill in black it just gives the building a little bit more depth because at a distance shaded areas tend to look darker in very contrast 
images. Even though that part of the wall might not be black, we're just gonna put it as so because manga, you're drawing in line art and all of that, essentially everything is high contrast. And so in high contrast, that shaded area because of where the light source is coming from, might as well be filled in black. And so when I have these kinds of positions in my manga, I tend to go in with tone, and this, for this, let's have it 35. Fill it in, it'll create this layer for me. This is not actually what I want, so I'm just gonna go P, a shortcut C to erase, or even just the eraser, as long as I'm on that layer to erase it. But then I go back to the pen, and I want to kind of create a shading. We're creating shade with it right there. Something like that. And we can, I usually tend to use the polyline tool because then the areas I'm selecting are exact. And I just hit fill. Just create a new one. And hit fill. So it's not just here that the shading is hitting and is the darkest, but because of the light source, part of these areas are also gonna be hit, but maybe less so. And so this is what I do when this part is filled in black, I kind of shade in, shade in this part. Not to get these exact, because I kind of did that freehand. I'll just select the parts that I don't want. I hit that select and hit delete. There you go. But again, back to these, you can see some tree stuff happening here. This is where, again, I would come in with a separate layer and do my thing. And I try to make sure it's a separate layer because it just looks better. If you want to add a character to it, assuming there was a character right here, you know, thicker lines to show line variation. And so the character will pop. You can have the line art there, and then you can have a layer behind shortcut B, shortcut B, shortcut B. Rather than vegetation, you go back to that gauss cloud under hatching, and then maybe on the white. And then behind it, I can have the character pop. So these are things to keep playing with until you get exactly what you want. And then with the windows, hold shift, I select them all kind of at once because you might want them to shear the same gradient. It looks something like that. Some people fill in the windows black. Some people give them a gradient like I just did. You might give them a gradient and then a separate layer. Go in with some lines. Some do that. Maybe multiple lines. And then you use a airbrush. Shortcut C for transparency just to Give that shine some gradient. It's up to you how you want to do the windows. But you do this, you, you do all this kind of stuff. Some doors in with certain tones. Or if you're using the tone to shade, you you know, you fill in some parts with just tone to, to show volume. Remember, like I said, underneath in these areas, I fill in black. And you kind of keep going, 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 going. And that's how you transform some of these already existing backgrounds to something tangible over here with backgrounds especially at the distance there's several ways i toned them and we'll go into more detail about that as we go on and i definitely use the gradients when i'm doing say the sky where you start is going to be one of the darkest parts so i control z if i don't want it to be too dark and then i start to drag from really outside the canvas so it's not too crazy and so this is fine right shortcut b to the brushes i go to india ink darker bleed I come right here to the bottom and hit the transparent shortcut C to hit that. But that just makes it that anywhere I touch on this layer, just it's almost like erasing, but I'm making it really transparent. This is different from shortcut E for the eraser, but it might as well be an erasing. But what I'm doing here is just then creating a cloud that I can use for the sky. Shortcut P for the real G pen, reduce the brush size with the brackets, or you just come over here and reduce the brush size. And then I give it like some finer touches here and there, make it look more like a cloud. And for a lot of people, this will be it. But sometimes I, I go an extra step, shortcut B to watercolor, running color edge, and I just touch it a little bit. And this is all done again with the transparency on. When I'm adding the clouds, I'm either adding the clouds in a linear fashion, like so, or a side by side, or in a circular vibe where everything is a little bit more circular. So the clouds might actually go this way or something like that. 
It's really up to you. I recommend you looking at how your favorite manga artists kind of create clouds. There are many other manga artists who straight up draw clouds with ink, like so, or, you know, keep it simple. The way you see clouds in Bleach is very different from the way you see clouds in One Piece. It depends on your art style. So here, doing the same thing with the clouds, rendering the sky and the clouds here for this page. There's a lot going on, so I just need to make sure I select the parts I want properly, make sure it's a different gradient for the water underneath, for the water below. I scrape out the clouds as I see fit and add more of like a shadow with the tone. And this is something I do with what I like to call the CTS, but you don't, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I used to call it the close to screen because I tend to do that for things that are really, really close to the screen, but not even always. So it doesn't really matter what you call it. But here, this is also showing some sunshine, some shade from the umbrella, just some extra oomph but I'm consistent and I use it to shade, kind of like cell shading, but I use it to shade the rest of the panel. I don't do it for every panel, but I do it for panels like this. If I know I'm gonna shade one part of the panel in that tone approach, outside of the backgrounds, which I always tone in a way, but if I'm gonna tone the characters in such a way, I try to be consistent throughout at least that panel. Again, this is some CTS stuff, which I will elaborate on, kind of like stylistic screen tones. In a way, you could see this as the shade covering that part of the leg, or it's close to the screen and to kind of show separation with the rest of the panel, her legs are toned. Again, there's just a method to the madness. You technically should find your own way. My motion screen tones here is just to help sell that sense of movement. So if I draw a panel like this, and maybe it's supposed to be filled in black if it's maybe in a fixed state, you know, black with maybe parts of it in tone to show where light hits the most. But if it's in movement like this, I'll kind of ink like so, and maybe we'll have a separate video that kind of shows me tackle stuff like this. But when I'm adding the tones, I don't just fill it in flat. I kind of go with similar strokes with that sense of motion, controlled chaos. And that's really all that is, at least when it comes to toning. If it's in motion, I try to tone in that chaotic way with the direction of motion, the same way I would ink in the direction of motion. Another one is the abstract blur. In a separate video, I show you guys how to create frame folders. These are the folders that you will find on a comic page where each panel is kind of its own folder. And in that video, I go into more depth on explaining how to do that and how it makes life easy, either with a frame folder or frame order. But this is just literally a rectangle. After I selected it, I kind of made it multiply just so it's kind of see-through in a way. Soft airbrush. I like to create these, these abstract blurs in backgrounds, right? There's some panels where you might not actually want to go in with detail drawing a lot of background. You might want to do something like this instead, maybe reminiscent of a soft light coming from beneath or a black and white wall, but it's supposed to be blurred out and you're supposed to focus a whole lot more on the character. You can come up with a bunch of reasons as to why you would do this. It also saves time. Again, a lot of the Japanese approach to making comics is putting out content. You still want the visuals to be quality, but putting out content is key. So you don't have to go into detail every single time. And even Western comics, if it is a colored comic, it will kind of be something like this, but maybe in color, but it's a different gradient in the background. Sometimes that blur or gradient might be representative of something else. It might be symbolic. Whatever the case may be, as long as there was a method to your madness, you are good to go. Bleach was one of the first manga that I saw this in. And again, shortcut C for transparent. Shortcut B, enough times to get the subtool decoration under hatching in the gauze cloud and get something like this. Right. The reason you use this, it just gives it a little bit more texture. That way it doesn't look as flat and all digital and whatever. You can also turn it into a tone, but increase the frequency back to an 85. 85 is as high as it goes. You see me use this a lot in my own comics. Either I go with this, or sometimes I leave the background completely white, or sometimes I leave the background filled black. It depends on what's actually going on in that panel. Just be able to justify the decisions that you make. Sometimes if I don't do any backgrounds, I might use like a gradient and erasing parts of it to form other things. It's almost like the whole background is kind of blurred, but there's a light source from the window. So I kind of leave the windows 
And it's just, it's very stylistic, but I think it works without having to draw every single thing in the background when it's not necessary and the focus is on the characters. Here again, I do some of that abstract blur going on, but here maybe it's not necessarily an abstract blur, it's more of like abstract, more dust around. So I have little lines like so to show that I used to draw smoke and when everywhere is kind of chaotic, especially after a battle or during a battle or buildings and boulders have been destroyed. You usually have everywhere be a little smoky. It's kind of dust from the debris, from the buildings, from fire, from all sorts of things. But then with the tone in the background, it's kind of doing that as well, but maybe this is at a distance so we don't get to see the line art as much. So I've kind of used that abstract blur approach to form that. And that's another way to, you know, if you don't have to draw the background, you don't always have to draw backgrounds. I tend to draw backgrounds a lot, but they're mostly done to make sure that the reader knows where the scene is taking place and they're not confused as to where the characters are positioned. But remember, it's up to you. Just be able to justify the decisions that you're making. I have a separate video that focuses a little bit more about how to draw those boulders, but this video is more so focused on the toning side of things. If you want more videos like this, just let me know. Make sure you engage with the video, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll have more videos like this. And maybe it might not be this detailed, but we can focus on singular things, put out more content for you guys. Here we have Caesar, a character from my series in that top panel. Because there's a light source in front of him, I'm kind of using the abstract blur to almost form a path of that light. Again, I just need to make sure I select exactly where I want it to be, and then I tackle like so. All of it is me being able to justify the decisions I'm making. These here are different kinds of tones. You know, Santa was kind of trapped in a black sphere. For those who have been following the series, you know what's going on, so I'm not gonna dive into it too much. But again, I'm just using tones as I see fit, using the airbrush, doing what I feel is necessary to render properly, but being consistent. Again, using that abstract blur thing, but more so as a light source to show light using that technique here. And I think it, uh, I think it works. For inside water, the way I approach this is again, using the airbrush to just kind of go over the whole panel. If they're on the water, make sure there's contrast. So Santa himself kind of pops and you know, parts, be parts behind him are darker, parts above. So it just depends on what parts you select and what parts you don't, you have to be careful when you choose and then i have all these bubbles and with the bubbles themselves i kind of erase the parts so that there aren't any airbrushes or gradients over it but then there's some that i would leave the airbrushes and gradients above so it's it's chaotic again but in a controlled way you can also use reference to help whether it be real life or other manga creators to see how did they tone a character underwater you might see some things you like you might see some things you don't you mix and match to form something new. Here I also added curvy speed lines. And if you wanna learn how to do that, maybe I'll do a separate video, but it's, it's really using the perspective guide, drawing the speed lines, and then using a mesh transform to kind of bend it because it's on a separate layer. And then I just made sure that it was all filled in white once I was done. On the water thing could be used for maybe jars, giant tubes filled with some kind of liquid, as you can see here. Obviously, some of it comes into play where you need to know how to draw bubbles. You don't just draw a bunch of circles. You know, sometimes some circles or bubbles are closer to others and at a distance, they can look like a random blob. Use reference for study. Here we have another CTS thing going on because this is like a moment where Sano notices something. So you can also use it to capture certain moments. But as usual, the parts of the eyes that shine, I'm gonna erase those parts. This is more rendering with the backgrounds, with some of the stuff I've talked about already, and then we're done. There are many ways you can do fire. If you want to give it line art, sometimes you can do like so. Maybe I might hit shortcut C, give it a sharper edge. Tiny particles kind of going in a direction, but some closer than others. This could be a single flame. Might have a tone, they can have it within. You have more explosions, maybe an explosion is happening. And maybe I'll have a separate video that goes into more detail on how to draw certain explosions, especially using my manga Apple Black as, as a model. Killing two birds with one stone, you guys get to see some behind the scenes stuff as well, some fun stuff. So you have a little explosion here, and some of it might be you know, almost like going in with straight up black again. A lot of this stuff is really high contrast. And then you have all these particles going, going away going outside like 
all leaving the center. It's chaotic, but controlled. There was a method to the madness. There are creators out there that maybe you don't necessarily want to have line art for your fire, smoke, clouds. Again, that's where you can use tone, as we've seen before. Use a transparent to form it out so it doesn't necessarily have line art to it. Lots of manga to kind of do things that are similar. And then you can have particles, maybe have the particles with white. You can even add some black to it as well. You know, maybe another layer going in with an airbrush to help sell it a little bit more. It's really up to you what you do. You can really do whatever you want. The recommendation is that you study your favorite creators and see how they create this within this grayscale format of making comics. And then you come up with your own approach to do it. And it might be you mixing and matching other styles, multiple styles to form something new, or maybe you already have an existing idea in your head. Here is an example of an explosion of kind of used tone to show some of the light. Had a background artist already work on this and shade some of the, and create some of the backgrounds. And then I did some of the shading, even separating some of the clouds as an effect to the explosion helps selling it further. When you have smoke from explosions, it's usually very dark in the beginning, but after a while, the smoke becomes lighter. Let's say if the explosion happened at night, in the morning, then it will be like completely light. And so I have a gradient right there, but it's lighter the closer it is to the explosion. So from panel one to two, we're kind of transitioning from the explosion to the smoke, transitioning into the next scene. And this has more to do with the, like the writing and the planning of the story and the layouts of the page and stuff like that. And I have a separate video that goes into my tips on that. So I highly recommend you guys go check that out. All right here, you see the gradient is going from darker to light where the light source originates from. But I've still tried to make sure that this gradient has some parts that are cleaned out, scratched out, transparent a little bit, just so that it's not as flat and digital, but also looks a little bit more realistic as maybe some of the smoke will be blocking other parts. I've done this in other parts of the manga as well, so if you guys have been tuned in, you've seen some of the stuff. These are just more CTS things. You can see a close to screen CTS, and I'm gonna tone that nose and mouth of Angelo because it's so close and it helps it pop versus just relying on the line variation because things that are closer to the viewer are inked thicker than things further away. What I've done, where you have the CTS, well, the character is already toned. Your skin is already toned right here. But the way I like to tone, sometimes there are people who would tone doing this CTS thing. And I call it CTS, it's just short for like close to screen, where we zoom in on the character, we're not drawing any backgrounds, but the character kind of pops because you tone it. If you see, you see it a lot in a lot of mainstream shonen manga, and it just actually draws more attention to the character. And it even makes the character look more tense sometimes, depending on how you use it. But there are people who would do this tone, but they wouldn't tone the eyes. When I add the CTS thing, it's almost like two separate layers. I have a separate layer for the skin, if they're dark skin or black. And then I have a separate layer for the quote unquote CTS that goes over everything. Sometimes I don't tone the whole thing. I use it as a shadow right here, almost like a character is towering above him. You can kind of see the reflection in the spectacle over here. Every time I do a CTS, I always leave a dash to show like a shine in the character's eyes versus like leaving the whole eye untoned. A lot of times people would not tone the eyes at all and teeth, which, you know, that's fine. But I tend to tone the whole thing. That's just me. Obviously here, there's a lot more eye shines and even like reflections in like the tears so I leave those white, but I tone everything. And that's separate from the skin toning. Like I still tone the skin, so it's like double. Here's another example of that in this panel. And even though the whole background is kind of toned to agree it's nighttime, but you have this character in the foreground and I have the whole character toned. It's actually a black character. So here where you see a little bit of the ear and stuff, I haven't toned that extra. Part of the character's clothes they're supposed to be toned. I still tone that, but then you tone them to also pop out as well. And it's, you can also say it's not just for them to pop out, maybe this light source here is also casting a shadow from our direction. So it's actually you know, darker than the rest of the panel. Using this page as an, as an example, again, given that you guys know, you guys understand the frame folder and the frame border and stuff like that, 
I have a folder on top of everything where I keep all the tones. And so this is the tone. This is the layer I use for all the basic tones. You see I turn toggle it off and on, you can kind of see. This is the layer I use for some of the tones where I have a character so close to the screen, I'm toning back to have them pop. So you see her legs is toned, but we get to see uh, the characters uh, further behind. So there's like a separation depth and atmospheric pressure maybe, but also shading. There's a lot going on. There are lots of reasons why you would tone like this, but it's up to you again. But that's the CTS tone right there. And then I have a separate tone full uh, tone layer for if a character has a dark skin or it's black. So I have it all separated above all the frame folders right here. So if you guys are interested in the videos that focus a little bit more about all of that, just let me know and we'll do more of a deep dive for everybody who wants to make manga comics in this way. For the two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, I oh, thank you. Don't forget to like, holy go smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications. Don't forget to check out our books. This is Apple Black and all the other ones. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, the list goes on. Sometimes I actually stream making these comic pages on Twitch, so make sure you follow me there. Leave comments if you have any questions. Be happy to help you. Swipe Manga, and I'm Audi 9000.